let's let's let me ask the question about this then. I mean, if you were to advise kids today in the music industry, what would you advise them? I said, go and kidnap an A R man and make him sign you up. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but do you know what? It's difficult because if it was 30 years ago, I would give people the advice to go, yes, do this. Whereas now, there are so many av different avenues. And you, for example, you look at Justin Bieber, who was picked up on because he did a couple of YouTube videos and he, he picked up a following. And I mean, obviously, the guy's talented. There's no doubt, there's no denying that. But he was discovered that way, you know, on his personal little YouTube thing, whatever he did. And a few other people have been found that way. Then you've got other people that were discovered um, singing. Who was it? It was busking. Oh, no, 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 I'll tell you what it was. Um, somebody said, somebody was going around just videoing people in the street saying, right, I'm going to sing a song to you, finish the song off, you know, and just to, just to make a collage. It was something for his, for, for his uni or something. And um, he did this thing, and this one girl started singing, and it was like, wow. And he's going, no, 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 don't stop, carry on, carry on. And she became, she, she got parts in, in the Disney films and did all sorts of stuff. I can't remember who she was, but she was incredible. Uh, there are so many different ways, and you've got all these talent shows now, and, uh, and not that I watch them, but, you know, Britain's got talent, and discovered a few proper, you know, stars and, and X Factor as well, although I'll never watch them, as I said, because um, I find them too frustrating, because they, amongst, amongst some of the talent, you've got just so much rubbish. I just, I just can't watch it. I just can't do it. But, no. uh, <coughs> but, um, my advice, if I did have to advise somebody as to what to do, the, the, the one thing that's been, that's been consistent throughout the industry is, yes, record stuff and put it out there. You've got all the different social media outlets and you can, you know, you can put a video out and, and link people from TikTok and, say, and, try, and hope that people will share and share and they will share and you can, you can, you can have that. But the one thing that's been consist consistent throughout the music industry since the beginning of time is go and play live. Go and find venues to play at, even if they're small, dinky little things. Um, but the only, the only thing I'll tell people to be careful of, because this is something that's become quite, um, it's it become quite, not the norm, but it's happening a lot in the music industry. And young people, like, I, I mean, I was young and I did, when I say rash things, I would, excuse me, agree to do a gig. And really, when you think back, you go, I should never have agreed to do that. They were exploiting me. They were exploiting the band, whatever it was. And they're doing that now by saying to people, you can come and play at this gig and it's X amount to get in. And for every ticket sold, we will give you a pound. So if you sell 100 tickets, your band gets 100 pounds. What's 100 pounds between a six-piece band? You know, so basically... They're, what they're doing is, is getting the band to do the PR for them, the band to tell their friends, come in and see us. So you're saying to your friends, pay X amount to come in and see us, because if you pay, then we get paid. And people think, oh, okay. And then when people realise how much the band are getting, and I've seen it from my daughter, because my daughter's singing, um, she's doing it all by herself. She hasn't come to Dad to say, Dad, I want to... she's doing it all herself. But I've seen some of the gigs and I've said, so you can't do these gigs because basically you will do the gig with your band in an eight, nine piece band and you'll get 80 quid. That's 10 pounds each because um, the, the venue says, you know, for every ticket, we'll give you X amount. Um, and then we'll, but, you know, for, we've got to take our commission first and then do it. And they end up with virtually nothing. And, and I think, yes, you're desperate to play and be seen, but not those gigs. There are other gigs. There are gigs that are actually paying gigs. So my advice would be to people, try and do gigs because getting seen is important because you never know who's going to be standing there. You know, the head of BMG could be standing there, Sony, someone from anywhere could be standing there. Someone who knows somebody could say, I saw this band and they are fantastic and you really need to go and see them. You never know. It might never happen. Um, but networking is is incredibly important and uh performing live is part of your networking thing it's probably one of the most important things because you're showing your product which is you your band your songs 
Um, so playing live, I think it's really important, but just be my advice is to people is just be careful not to fall into this rut where people are saying to you, oh yeah, you're playing at this really, um, uh, you know, um, nice venue, you know, very illustrious, it's got a great name. Um, and because you're so desperate to play at that venue, along with three or four other bands, so you've got four or five bands playing that night. It's the, they called it the blah, blah night. They give it a name. All these bands are appearing and all these bands are getting their friends to come. Yeah. And some, some guy who set it all up is getting a load of, a lot of money. Um, because if you imagine there's a venue with 500 people or even 300 people and they're paying 10 pounds each, get three grand. You've got five bands, you're paying them all 100 pounds each, 500 quid. The promoter just made two and a half grand, and that's without getting anything from the drinks. If he's on a deal with a venue, say, I want a percent of the drinks. So you just made somebody a lot of money in your desperation to show what you can do. No, what you do is go to smaller venues where they will actually pay you and give you a meal, maybe, and give you some drinks. And people that come will come just to see you because that's what they've come for. And the locals will come and see you because they come to keep, they go there regularly and you'll build up a fan base that way. But to actually line someone else's pockets and go on with virtually nothing in the, your desperation to play a gig, we've all done it, but I can say now from my experience, no, it's really not worth it. Because you never, nothing ever comes of it. And what happens is when you do one of those gigs, and these people have got friends, or they'll say, "Oh, we've got another gig over there. Come and do that one as well." And you end up, you end up basically, we are working for them. You're working for them, making them lots of money. And it's one of those things that's become almost the industry norm. It's a bit like when people used to pay to do support slots. We really want to support so and so. So does he. So does he. And they go, right, well. Someone's got to put a bid in. Who wants it bad enough? And you end up paying to be a support band. So you're supporting the band, you know, just, just for people that don't understand. I know you do, but you're supporting the band on 15 dates throughout the UK. And instead of getting paid 15 fees, you're paying 15 fees to do that support, hoping that the fans of the main, the headlining band, will like you enough to go and buy your CD or whatever they're going to do. You're going to come and see you independently, and it's a gamble that very, very, very rarely pays off because you invest a lot of money and you don't see any return for it. And it's, I don't know if any band that have done that and then turned around and said it was worth investing, you know, at the time when we were poor, it was worth investing, you know, 60, 80 grand into the band because we eventually became famous because of that. You might become famous, but it wasn't because of that. It was because of other issues, other factors.